In this tutorial, let's see how to create a new employee. So you go to card file, card list, and go to employee here. Okay, so there are no existing employees, so I'm creating a new employee. So I'm saying new. Okay, and the employee's last name is Ravi Party, and employee's first name is Krish. Okay, and say address is something like 2000 Brisbane Street. Brisbane and Queensland 4000. Now putting the postcode and this information, address, city, state and postcode information is very important because if you don't put this information for any reason, when you're doing the pay summaries at the end of the year, it will not allow you to print it. Okay, so It's a good idea to have the information ready when you're trying to insert a new employee okay so that's the information there and that's the phone number it's something like 0404 okay and the email address is again very important so I'm, I would say here accounts at um, fish party or um, or something like fish at gmail.com whatever is the employee's email address this is very important because you would be sending the pay slips to this email address okay so it's a very important email address so and website if the employee usually employees don't have any website so you can ignore that and then let's go to card details again here if you have any information here regarding employee um, details usually what I put is I put emergency contact there emergency contact details name and phone number but again it's your company policy whether you want to have the emergency information in my op system or there's a separate HR file and HR department is looking after it okay so this is anything relating to the employee uh, finance situation okay which which is related to the payroll uh, my op information all right let's go to the payroll detail now pay Close attention, this is very important. So I'll go slow here. So date of birth is very important, something like 1st of January 1980. Okay. 1980. Tab. So gender male. Start date is 1st of July 2014. Termination date is nil. So I'm an individual and I'm permanent and I'm full-time and employment classification um, there is construction level worker I want a financial controller so I would say new and I'll just create a category called financial controller so I say tab and say OK alright so it should allow me to click financial controller there you go financial controller Payslip delivery, I want this to be emailed. Now notice what happens. It says to be printed and there's no payslip email. So as soon as I say email address, you see this email address. Now this is getting picked up from this address here. Okay, That's why I said email address, inserting email address in this profile section is very important. Right, let's go to payroll detail. Yep, now these are all the personal details. Okay, now let's go to wages. Now, in this section, it asks me uh, my wage information. So I would say, am I a salary person or hourly person? So I would say, I'm salary person. Annual salary is something like 150000 Okay, that's the annual salary. Whatever is the annual salary, you put it in there. And this will calculate the hourly rate. And pay frequency is something like weekly, fortnightly, twice a month, monthly. So I would leave it as weekly, check with your payroll department or check with your HR team when is the, uh, when is the pay period. So what is the frequency of the pay period? It's weekly, weekly. Hours in a weekly pay period is 38. If you remember when we are setting it up, when we go to easy assistant uh, at payroll section, we set this information, we put this information here, payroll information full-time week course is 38 so that's what it is picking it from okay so you don't have to enter again and again right now wage expense category what GL code you want this to go into I would say wages and salaries yep I'm happy with that so let's leave it there all right now these are all the different categories I would get paid 
So I can get paid as an advance. I can get back pay. I can, I'll get a base salary. I can get a bonus. I can get a commission. I can, I can get a holiday pay and I can get a stick pay. Usually I'm a full time so I may not be entitled for this overtime and other income. But as always every individual's arrangement is different. Please check with your HR department what arrangement is with that particular individual employee. Okay, So that's the wages category. Let's go to the next one. It's called superannuation. By default we need to click this one which is a superannuation guarantee employer's payment which is 9.5 percent I am uh, in September 2014 so the current uh, current percentage is 9.5 so I'll say 9.5 okay if you remember the payroll setup we put as default as Sun Super so if you click this one it will give you the option as what superannuation every individual is different let's assume that I have it Q super so what I have to do is I have to create a superannuation fund so I'll go new so when I click new it will ask me what super what the name of the superannuation I say Q super okay employer membership number usually employer membership number is only given if that fund is your default superannuation fund now in this example we have seen that Sun super is our default superannuation fund so other than Sun Super, no other superannuation will have an employer number. So it's safely we can ignore this number here. Okay. However, it's a good idea to insert some information regarding phone number and fund website. Okay. So phone number is something like 07-3333. So whatever is a Q Super's phone number, some website is something like www.qsuper.com.au. Okay, so let's say okay right so you tick this one now if the employee is doing salary sacrifice or any other type of superannuation you take that thing uh, you take that particular category so in this example I'm showing you a simple employee setup so I am not ticking any of that I will show in advanced tutorials how to do uh, in-depth payroll okay right in this example, I am clicking the Q super here, right? This is very important employee membership number. You must obtain this membership number before the employee starts or commences the employment. Um, so you can pay into the superannuation fund once a quarter, once a month, whatever is the frequency. So I'm putting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's employee membership number. Okay, that's a superannuation. Let's go to entitlement right now I am eligible to get a holiday pay and a sick pay so I will tick both of them what it means is that the system will automatically calculate the percentage as we did the setup so let's click what setup did we do yep it equals to six point seven point six nine percent of my gross salary now as we discussed you should know how we arrive with this percentage so I'll show you once again you will get four weeks of annual leaves in 52 weeks of working week so that is 7.69 percent of your gross salary uh, is your annual leave accrual okay I'll do that once again four weeks divided by 52 weeks times 100 so that is 7.69 percent you will accrue annual leave on your gross salaries okay so let's say okay and the sick leave is exactly the same calculation it is two weeks divided by 52 times 100 okay 3.84 3.84 okay if you notice at the end you should have a symbol called percentage there okay so let's say okay so I have ticked both of them under entitlements I'm a full-time employee I am entitled to get four weeks of annual leave and two weeks of, two weeks of sick leave let's go to the next section called deductions now there you can the quite common deduction is the union fee and one-time deduction employee purchase and advance repayment so in this example I'm not ticking anything I'm leaving it free but it's quite common that you would have a union fee deduction okay the next one is employer expenses usually you can tick the work cover here and you can insert a percentage 
here, something like 2% on the gross salaries. Or you can ticket for this particular employee, or you can untick it, and your financial controller would do an accrual for work cover. Okay, so at this stage, I am not ticking the work cover expense. Okay, the next one is taxes. Very, very, very important. This is your tax file number, your nine digit tax file number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is very, very important. Your tax file number. The next section is the tax free threshold. There are different categories um, when the employee is filling. Um, his tax file declaration form, he'll tell you, he'll inform you, he'll advise you if you need to hold for his hex debt or financial supplement debt or if you if there are any other arrangements with tax office. Okay, so there are a lot of categories here. Get your financial controller's advice or your tax accountant's advice on what to click here. By usually you would click this tax free threshold. The way I would advise the employees is if the employees are having two jobs, usually the job they are earning less money, you would click that as no tax free threshold. Okay, so there is a no tax free threshold here, as you notice. You see, no tax free threshold. What it means is the tax would be calculated from the first dollar the employee earns. Whereas if you click tax free threshold, that means on the first $18,000 or whatever the tax-free threshold is there, the employee will not uh, get tax deducted on that um, amount. Okay. Once again, get your financial controller's advice or your tax accountant's advice on that one. Okay. So you should always follow what the employee has suggested you or advised you on his tax file declaration form. And you need to follow that advice. Right. That's regarding taxes. Now, next one is standard pay, leave it as it is, and pay history it will be zero because we haven't paid this employee yet. And then time billing again it will be zero. Okay, so we have looked at the payroll section, payroll details. Let's go to the next one. Again, a very important section. If you are paying with check, you click check account. If you're paying with electronic payment, which is their bank account, you can put into their bank account. And there is an option that you can actually put two bank accounts here and you can give what percentage you want this to be split is it 75 percent in one bank account and the remaining value in this bank account if the employee wishes to have two bank accounts credited with his um, payroll but in this example i will make it as one and to make it easy the bsp number i can put as one two three four five six bank account number something like one two three four five six seven eight nine Bank account name would be Krish Ravipati. That's the employee's name. And this is the statement text which will appear on employee's bank statement. So I would something like KRPYLTD because this is the employer's name. So I want this to appear on my employee's bank statement. Okay, so this, this is how it's going to appear. The next one's contact log is clean and jobs is grayed out and history is clean again because I haven't paid any money to this employee. Okay, so that's how you will set up a new employee. Very important. So you go to profile, card details, payroll details. Every single information is very important and very sensitive. So please pay extra attention when you're setting up the new employee information.